So to conclude, I'd like to invite a few people on to join a panel to um, discuss everything that we've heard today. So why don't all of you come up straight away and then I can introduce you. Um, it's a fantastic panel because it's such a rich mixture of uh, experience, um, both from on the agency side but also the client side and within agent. Yes, I'm going to take this one. Um, within the agency side, um, also commercial experience as well. So first of all, on the end, I'd like to uh, welcome Dominic um, Collins, who's the CMO of Legal and General. Uh, fantastic if you've managed to read his profile in, in, in the little booklet that you've got, uh, that it makes that point about the breadth of the marketing director's role just so beautifully, um, because it says he's responsible for brand marketing communications, digital customer experience, data insight, and internal brand and employee engagement. And he's obviously trying to transform, his, his role is to transform positively, both internally, externally, people's experience of, of that business and brand. So um, thank you. He's obviously worked in the digital area a, a long time, previously with um, EE. And before that, uh, he had to let go of that business that we used to call magazines that we did that to. Many so many years ago. Many, many years ago. Um, I'd like to also welcome uh, Janet um, to the board. Uh, Janet is the COO of Gray, so an agency representative. But interestingly, she's also um, worked on the client side as well. And what's uh, her role is uh, COO now, but she's also previously been CFO. So I think it'd be very interesting to hear you talk about payment methods and rewards and, and help us really work out um, uh, help build on that part of the conversation. Her client experience uh, was with uh, Coca-Cola. Um, and then Lee, who heads up the IPA uh, agency relationship group uh, as one of the things, who initiated our project with us at Hall & Partners. Um, she spanned two continents. I don't know what that means, but I'm going to find that out later. Um, but has lots of agency experience working at AMV, BBDO, Saatchi, and obviously now is the CEO of DARE, um, and works on a lot of strategic relationships with, uh, with major international clients, BA, Toyota, Tesco. Um, the other thing I'm going to explore a bit later is that she's a director of the, on the board of Hofest uh, Schechtor. Dance. It's a dance. dance company, yes. It's a dance company, so <laughs> we're going to find out all about Keep her hobby in dancing. Lee, Lee was a oh, ballerina. <laughs> Previous ballerina. Lee was a ballerina. Not really. Let's get that out there right discussion. now. <laughs> Excellent. And then Suki's um, perspective, uh, running Oyster um, Catchers as the founding partner, is going to be really interesting as well. So we've been talking about relationships between clients and agencies, and I think you'll have an absolutely unique perspective on that, uh, talking to, to clients looking for new people and new relationships to work with. Um, she has she also responsible for some major client strategic relationships, Barclays, McDonald's, Sainsbury's, British Airways again, um, and Avis. Um, she's been previous chair of the Marketing Society. Uh, she's on the board of trustees for Macmillan uh, Cancer. And she's been given an honorary doctorate um, from the Coventry University for her services for international business. So it'd be really interesting to hear all of that. So uh, some very different perspectives. Oh, I have to take this with me, don't I? So I wanted to really just kick off. I mean, we've heard a lot of different things uh, this morning about the way the industry is changing and how clients and agencies are responding to that. Uh, picking up on some of the sentiments and the perspectives that you've heard, you know, where do they resonate from where, where, you're, where you're seeing, what you're seeing in, in the world from your different perspectives? Do you want to start at the end, Dominic? Okay, I feel like it's kind of sacrificial lamb client here. Um, and I didn't say all the nasty stuff that was in the presentation earlier. I said all the good stuff. Um, but I will try and, I will try and represent the, the, the role of marketing and marketeers. Um, I think it's interesting that the, kind of the way that the debate has been formed and that it's about what do clients think about agencies and what agencies think about clients. <clears throat> I think it would be a better informed debate if it was more um, what do clients and agencies think about customers. <clears throat> because actually I think that most of the issues are driven by a change in customer behaviour. Um, and if we, and I think just to get to the number of it, if we work together to understand that behaviour and to work out what are the new solutions that we need to create, where, where, do we, where do we need to hold more skills internally, where do agencies need to build more skills in order to be able to have a broader set of experience that they can lend to different industries and to different clients, then we will continue to win. 
um, if the customer and the experience that the customer uh, requires and starts to expect is lost, um, that is when both agencies and clients will also lose. I think that's interesting. I mean, do you think agencies have lost that perspective on customers because it's always been at the heart of what they've done? Uh, I, th I think that, it's, that things have changed very quickly um, and not everyone behaves in the same way. So not everyone sits down together and watches television. Um, as we know, and you know, th these are all you know, um, truisms. But so, so I think it's not that agencies have lost their way and haven't been, you know, aren't customer centric anymore. And I think you know, that one of the one of the issues a lot of a lot of clients have is that they're not customer centric enough, and they will look to their agency to try and inject some of that some of that insight into their organisations. I, I just think that it's that it's so fragmented now, it's, and it's so um, multidisciplinary, multi-channel, multi-screen that actually the agencies haven't changed fast enough in, in terms of being able to continue to bring the level of expertise mm -hmm. alongside that. I also think that because of digital kind of just generally, um, the business models of agencies are challenged because you know, years ago, being very generalistic, years ago, agencies made a lot, you know, good margin on media. <clears throat> that then got eroded. They then needed to make good margin on creative. And actually it's pretty, I mean, I remember going back years and years ago when I was at a company called Buongiorno, going to a large, um, large beauty company and we're doing, we're doing a, a text campaign for them. And, they, and the um, brand, brand director said, you know, we had a bit of a laugh because her agency had charged, wanted to charge her 15,000 pounds for a text, which is 160 characters, because that was the minimum kind of amount that they charged for creative. And so that was kind of way back, way back then, just kind of, a, 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 kind of anticipating the fact that actually it's hard to make good money on, on non-broadcast creative, which then starts meaning that, that you know, the, you need as an agency to start making money back on media again, which means that you then think about programmatic and you start losing transparency and, and actually it becomes a bit of a vicious circle. I think that's a perfect uh, lead in to you, Janet, to uh, give your perspective on that financial business model. Well, I guess when I joined the agency world, um, I could empathise with a lot of the, the comments I was hearing on the screen from clients. I was somewhat overwhelmed and surprised by the lack of commerciality in the agency language and vocabulary. It was almost a bit like a taboo subject and, and there was this lack of transparency even within an agency of its numbers and the revenue it was generating on clients, which clients were profitable, which clients weren't. And whereas in a client land, everybody, regardless of their function, has a greater commercial understanding of the business, whether they're driving the top line, whether they're involved in the distribution supply chain, in which case, how do they do their job more efficiently and effectively to maximise profit? Yet in the agency, there's just seemed an absence of, of, of uh, interest or language or sharing of information within. So, so some of those statements, sadly, don't surprise me. They just frustrate and disappoint me. So I, I think coming across the fence, we worked hard to up the understanding of commerciality and to increase the knowledge and to be more transparent and to set targets. Apologies if it means that our people feel like they're selling, but we're a business just like other clients' business are businesses. And so to encourage people to realise their own value I mean, I, I don't think it's the. F I don't think we should blame clients for not feeling that we're poor, we're well paid. I think we have to look at ourselves in the mirror and ask ourselves, do we value ourselves? And start at home because if we value ourselves, our challenge is to work out how we value that value and how we articulate it to clients so that they can articulate internally what's driving that value. So. People at Grey know me for saying this, but if you're not speaking, if you're not talking about numbers, you're not talking about business. Mm -hmm. And whilst we are a creative industry, and that's our USP, we have we are a creative business. We have to balance those two, and they're not a paradox. Commerciality, you can achieve both creativity and success. So I'm disappointed that that's that feedback's still coming through, but I think as an industry, we have to reflect on it and act on it. And, and up the commercial knowledge and skills in our business dramatically to compete. I'm going to you, Suki. Um, sorry yes. to jump in the yes, order sure. there. But, <laughs> but I just think it's interesting that you're, you know, you're talking about commercial creativity mm, yeah. and the need mm. to raise that. And I, and I know that, uh, well, just thinking about your perspective from talking to clients when they're coming to you about agencies and looking for the right partners, is that something that resonates with you? Um, yes, I mean, I think my overall observation was, I think it was very kind of Hall and Partners to say don't panic. But actually, I think it would be very good if everyone did panic. Yeah. Because 
the rate of change is just not fast enough. And I think that it's very telling, if you look at Anthony Jenkins, if the chief exec of Barclays can be fired because the change... <laughs> I'm waving at my Barclays friends. How hard has it been to make that transformation from a marketing perspective happen? Well, we've been, it took us two and a half years to get to where we were. Um, and it's still ongoing. And that's some work that we started two and a half years ago with them. And there's other things going. It's just not enough. And I completely agree with you, Janet, that... Um, You've got to put the commercials at the, bit, the heart of the business. It alarms me slightly, and I'm not surprised, that the agencies have a much more kind of glowing perspective on clients than clients do on agencies. Um, and, that, and that is, you know, sort of because agencies like to be nice and positive and clients don't. And I do think that clients, and we've talked a lot about this, Dom, haven't we, that clients have got to push their way further up the food chain. And that's partly by being better themselves. Now, there's, I don't think there's enough really good, talented marketeers that are broad enough to have that relationship in the boardroom. And they've got to have that, because otherwise they can't expand that. And agencies need to be able to deliver for the clients and help and, and transform themselves. And so until you get that happening, I think um, panicking is good, but actually panicking for a reason panic. to, to make something happen is a really good idea. Positive panic. Yeah. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah. Two P's, memorable. Well, and, and I think building on that point about how do we respond differently yeah. and deliver differently to, to what clients need, and I, I know that you've got some interesting perspectives on that. Yeah. I mean, um, we got um, Vanilla engaged. We're very privileged to have had you and the Hall and Partners team involved. It, it, this entire thing came from a conversation we're having with a, a brilliant group of people, the client relationship group. We've got the wonderful Sarah Tate here today and James DC and Mark Boyd was here. And, um, it's a fantastic group. And um, I suppose the research of the last couple of years was showing that there was a real sort of chasm and sort of an identity crisis, particularly in those people who are client facing. What is going on? There's such an identity crisis. These poor account management people running in circles, trying to make their clients happy, trying to get up on the agenda, trying to be more commercial, getting nowhere. And I suppose, um, the, now I'm going to talk a little bit from a dare perspective, um, who's also been through an identity crisis and sort of tried to be all things to all men at one point in time. What we've done is had a really long, hard look at what the conversation is in the exec suite. Um, and that is all around customer experience. You know, you talk about putting the customer right front and center of the conversations we're having with our clients. I can't endorse that strongly enough. And actually, because I'm such a nerd, um, but also because I want us to panic, I've looked at some of the quotes um, that are out there in the public domain from our new competitors. So um, IBM did a state of marketing report in 2014. Last year, so talking about 2013, forward-thinking marketeers were working hard to redefine their role and influence within the enterprise today. They've earned a seat at the business strategy table and are taking on the hard work of owning the customer experience across the enterprise. Um, this is from Harvard Business Review. I hate quoting Harvard Business Review, but anyhow. You know, delivering above market growth increasingly hinges on differentiating the customer experience. And this is Accenture. Marketing is inextricably linked to technology. So much so that by 2017, CMOs are projected to spend more on information technology and analytics than CIOs. So I find myself absolutely unsurprised uh, to hear, I think it was um, the lady from HSBC earlier, talking about KPMG talking in the boardroom around territory that should be ours. We've, we are behind pace. These guys are on the case. And interestingly, they're no longer just targeting the CFOs and the CTOs. They're targeting our clients. So, so I'm genuinely had a little panic, but now I'm much more in the, in the space of how exciting is that? Because the thing that we do have is that natural empathy with the customer. We understand brands and we are highly creative in, as an industry. <laughs> so, so let's be in this positive panic mode I, I, and I let's can, move and on. I think it's a really good observation because you've got to want to be back there. Yes. And I think, you know, I've done lots of conversations between clients and agencies at all levels, including those uh, IBMs and Accentures. Mm. And if you ask the question, what relationship would you like? Mm. So often, the agency's defaults to, I want to own the brand. Mm. I, don't ma I don't mind mm. about having a conversation in the boardroom. Mm. don't even mind about seeing the CMO. Mm. I want to own the brand. Mm. And that's probably the wrong question now. Mm. Um, but, uh, you know, I think that your challenge that you have, Dom, within marketing and the con conversations that you're having at Boardroom is a very different conversation around what you're trying to get through a very difficult business to make change um, mm. and what your agency needs to help you do that. 
Yeah, I, I, we heard it a little bit earlier. Sorry, I mean, I just th took over that was completely rude, wasn't it? I'll just, just, I'll just she ask always takes to over. <laughs> she thinks it's some kind of oyster <laughs> catcher's <laughs> event. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't paid for the nibbles, Suki, today. Okay, okay, I'm gonna remember um, my place. So, I forgot the question there. So, uh, yeah, I, I mean, it's a, it's a bit of a hackneyed phrase, but I think, there, you know, part of my challenge, well, part of my challenge is, well, interestingly, League in General has never had a CMO before in 178 years. <clears throat> so part of my challenge was just kind of squeezing myself into cracks in the rock and trying to kind of add value in, in, in a role that never existed before and, and bring together a bunch of stuff and, and actually show how that can help to transform an organisation which is actually incredibly successful. Um, you know, I know that if, what, if you're talking Barclays, you know, David Weldon has, has said before that actually one of the best things that ever happened to what he was able to change at at Barclays was when the burning platform of LIBOR, et cetera, happened. And one of the issues that I have is that Legal in General actually does have double-digit growth and is extremely successful and is a multi-billion pound business. And, and, and actually, there's lots of people in my organization who kind of know that we need to change, but don't necessarily feel that it's kind of in their time frame. So I think, you know, we as an industry and we as, as, as marketeers absolutely need to reinforce the fact that marketing is an investment, it's not a cost. Um, I'm used to sitting around a, you know, a boardroom table with with one CFO, um, mm. basically everybody that sits around my table, apart from Elaine who does HR, is a CFO, uh, essentially. You know, they're all accountants and actuaries. Um, and so the, the, the focus on, on ROI and on attribution and all of those things is, is huge. Mm. And I think, and it's almost like we've created as an industry through kind of programmatic and digital media more broadly, a bit of a Frankenstein, because suddenly it becomes very easy, more easy than ever before, to be able to start looking at very clear, predictable, credible metrics against advertising. And so you kind of almost, it becomes a bit of a methadone that people get hooked on and they want the same for everything else. And so, well, actually, why should I do that sponsorship over here when I could just spend some more money on search? Um, and so I think it's our, it's our responsibility to be able to put all of those things together into something which is much more around brand response rather than brand and response. Um, to show that actually we need to still be smart around the, the thing. I, I, and actually, whether it's 60-40 or 80-20 or, uh, or whatever, I think most, certainly in my, in my company, I don't think I'd ever get away with just doing a brand campaign. Mm -hmm. I need to do response campaigns that are consistently branded. Yes, I love that brand response rather yeah. than having that division between the two because that automatically makes you go to that long and short-term space, mm. doesn't it? Um, I wanted to turn to the audience and see if there are any uh, questions uh, for this illustrious panel. Sorry. Yes, there's one. Hi. <coughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, I'm Tony Fogart, and um, I come from an agency called Co Computer Lab up in Manchester. We're a 15 year old uh, digital startup. And um, we, we're focused more on um, the, uh, we're probably more of a specialist digital focused on what might be design and build or customer experience platforms. But um, we find that, uh, or I'm finding more and more, that some of the barriers for us with working with clients is really the understanding of uh, moving away from a campaigning world into more of a platforming world and developing product ongoing uh, platforms that need a, essentially a different approach, much more agile and so product-focused approach. And I just wondered what uh, your opinion was on the role that agencies can create or, or deliver in terms of um, training and helping clients. And uh, we've talked about um, CPD from an agency perspective, but um, we find actually really the best relationships where we collaborate over platform performance and essentially the culture that surrounds those platforms and the, and the processes and people that we work with in, in the client space. Uh, can I take that, actually, because I'm quite interested in that subject matter. One of the barriers we come up across a lot, you get clients going, we, wa we want this customer experience, we want the digitally connected customer experience. It will you know, be really important to have your data guy there. And then you look at the way they're structured as an organisation, and they're still very siloed and certainly not organised around the customer, and they also are not that literate around some of the platform stuff and not deeply into it. So there's a massive job to be done around education. Um, a lot of the, the big consultancies I do look at as the, as the overlap increases do have massive change management programs and education programs as part of their commercial model. That's quite an interesting um, place for us to be thinking about. 
Um, whether or not clients will prepare to buy, buy that from an agency, I don't know. Mm. But it's an interesting conundrum. But there's definitely an education job to be done across the piece. Yeah, I, th I think, think. Well, I think it's interesting that <coughs> marketing directors out of the board positions is probably the only position that you can get to having left university and never done any further academic study in order to go onto the board. You'd never have an FD there who just left university and then you know, didn't carry on. And I wonder whether there's an intrinsic lack of um, requirement for formal training mm, that marketeers feel great. themselves. And therefore, they don't naturally do it. They don't put it into their organisations. They don't naturally think to other people to help them. However, I would say, I do think there's a bit of a sea change. Now, it might be just because we now do training. I don't know. I think that it's interesting for me as a business model. We now run lots of training programmes. We've got a new programme for CMOs starting on Monday explicitly around having the boardroom conversation. So whether that's because budgets are a bit better now and so they're getting to get with training or the, the kind of research that you've done here at the IPA is the same on the client side. But uh, I, I hope it's because... I hope it's that. I hope it's because they're beginning to panic. Because, you know, <laughs> bringing it back to value... I do think, you know, to steal the BA's line, I, uh, it's not, I do feel agencies sometimes feel like we're here to serve. Well, I, I don't hear enough agencies talking about their own brand. And if they were to speak more about their own brand, I think they would immediately look, about, look at what they're doing, how they're adding value to their, their business and therefore their client's business. And they would be able to have a more value-based conversation. Because if you give something away, as the industry is, it, it continues to do on a regular basis, you're telling the client it's worthless. And so we actually have to value ourselves and then be proud of that value and articulate it. And which I, I think does mean that there's an awful lot more accreditation and training and, and, and becoming more chartered required in our industry so that it isn't seen as something soft, fluffy, creative. It's seriously seen as a business that makes a massive success and change to brands and transforms businesses through its creativity. You, you can't have one without the other. And we have, up, have got to upweight the value that we see and importance that we see on the commerciality in our business because I think it's our Achilles heel. It's what, it, what enables clients so easily to sort of push us to, to cost back cost or to push us down and criticise us for not being commercial because we're not talking about what we do in those terms. I mean, Les very clearly talked about the impact, you know, on every pound invested was delivering eight pounds something back. That's the conversation we should be having in our pitch meetings along with the value of the idea. They're, that's what the McKinsey's would do. That's what those other brands would do, which is why they get more serious attention. But are they just, they've got qualified practitioners doing that stuff. I mean, is there a hiring strategy that we need to reflect upon as an industry? Because I'm looking at people who are at KPMG. And let me tell you, they're quite excited about working in creative business. Oh, yeah. They love it. Yeah. They love it. I have to colour code them because they're only used to working on one project at a once. Yeah. So they give them, you give them the book, you know, they give them a colour code. So it's so three projects at once, quite well, challenging. they're buying creative businesses. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they because they recognise they haven't got yes. that, that yeah. cup, they can't create that culture that drives that creativity to thrive. So they're, they're buying it and leaving it in its special little ecosystem yeah. because they know to bring it into their heartland would kill it. Mm. So, you know, we should be very worried. And really? Sir Martin Sorrell spoke at the big IBM event last year. Well, that for me was really scary because IBM I see as a major threat major. to our industry. Well, they they recognise that their, their future business model is broken mm. and so they're fixing it. Yes. Exactly. Because they're strategic and they go, yes. oh, yes. hang on a minute, 10 years' time, people aren't going to pay me for the stuff that they're paying me for today because increasingly it's not relevant or it's mm. being internalised or whatever. So who, who can I go and disrupt? Oh, these guys are a bit sleepy. We'll go and have a bit of that. Exactly. And right now, you, I think you've got an opportunity as more kind of, mm. in, you know, I wouldn't want to say incumbent, but you know, kind of the traditional agency set. Because what ha tends to happen, and I've been into Deloitte Digital and I've been KPMG and all these things, and, and actually what happens is they have to spend quite a lot above what you would have to spend to get that talent. Yeah. Because no one really wants to go and work for Deloitte Digital. They'd right. much rather go and work for J. Walter Thompson. Um, but, but they get them anyway, and they will give them a really nice environment, and they'll work on really cool stuff, and they'll have you know, some you know, virtual reality Amazing. masks. And, <laughs> and, 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 and <laughs> But they will also pay them about 25% more than you are paying them in order to get them out into that business, which means that they actually have, even though, yes, they're part of this big audit business, essentially, and they, they're getting the door because they're their audit partner, um, 
that to make that individual piece of their business profitable, they have to charge more than you have to charge today. Mm. So I think the opportunity for you is to retain the talent, to train the talent, but also to then properly monetize and prove the value of your talent yeah. but, and, tr and not lose them to these people who are trying to eat your lunch. I, I agree. I mean, I think it's interesting, isn't it? At a, at a consultancy, you wouldn't really not do an MBA. You know, that's, that's what you do. So the starter point, I think more and more clients recognise that. And interestingly, I mean, I did my MBA quite a while ago. My clients paid for my MBA because the agency wouldn't pay for me. They said, no, no, go and do a course on advertising because you're in advertising. Yeah. And my clients went, oh, you're going to do a really interesting dissertation. We'll pay you for it. That'll pay your fees. And I think it's that. You've just got to set the standard higher yeah. at a general business sense yeah. in the same way that, you know, I have a conversation with CMO saying... An MBA is not enough. What else are you going to do to understand the rest of the articulation of the boardroom? So everyone's just got to reach out. And look inside our businesses at what we can do differently. Because it doesn't strike me that our models, and I don't mean financial remuneration models, but the way the businesses are structured, and they look the same as they did 10 years ago, yeah. 20 years ago. Yeah. So we kind of need yeah. to take the medicine we're trying to give our clients and say, well, how do we need to change our own structures to be efficient, effective, competitive, agile? It's probably not doing the same thing time on time again and expecting a different result. I mean, that's madness. I agree. And I, th it was fun. I had a great conversation with a, with a CEO of an agency group this week. We're talking, we do a big transformation project for a um, retail client that we're doing at the moment. So I phoned up to have the con the start a conversation about it. And actually what he did, really interestingly spent 25 minutes telling me about everything they were doing at the agency, which was actually one thing, which is getting the one P&L. Which is, I understand, a massive issue for an agency, but that doesn't even start to begin to answer the question of the client, which is, how are we going to transform the way we do marketing together? And I can understand the frustration when the client's company is going, OK, you're trying to just get yourselves in place and in order. I want to have a bigger conversation. So could you get on with that stuff? And then we can have a conversation about how do we move together. Just being really simplistic about that, uh, clients use agencies or consultants or contractors for stuff that they don't want to do themselves or stuff where it's not worth them internalising it. So you know, there's the, most, most companies, it's not really worth them having a bit of their business that makes TV commercials. Because that's, so that's why we use an agency. Um, but, but actually what I think smart companies do is they evolve quite quickly because they are under constant pressure. Mm. And, and actually, you know, it could be that a huge amount of activity now from a marketing perspective is really thinking about digital and social, let's say. Well, I'd rather do that myself because actually 90% of social is linked to service. And, 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 and so I think what you're finding is that a lot of marketing, because you know, marketing is what you do, right? you know, um, a lot of marketing is, and a lot of your brand building, because your brand is what you do as well, not what you say, it is linked to, nicking Lee's lines, is, is, is linked <laughs> to um, for stuff that's far closer to your customer and far closer to your business. And therefore, smart businesses are bringing more stuff in. You know, I'm building a UX delivery team. And I've done that pretty much with all the businesses that I've, that I've done. Now, of course, I'm not going to have 60 people. I'm going to have about six. And, and then I'll need to work with, you know, like, you, you know, your agency or Dare or, or Wonderman or somebody else in order to be able to do spike activity. But the kind of day in, day out stuff, you know, di digital is all of our, I'm, a, I'm kind of on record as, as uh, not agreeing with chief digital officers. Um, because I think digital is just our businesses now. You know, yeah. Facebook, Facebook doesn't have a digital department. It's just Facebook. Um, and our businesses are increasing, all of our businesses are increasingly just digital businesses. And so we need to look at all the different you know, elements of how we communicate and how we create experiences for our customers, whether they be sales, they be service, they be acquisition, they be retention, uh, they be cross-sell, all of these things, they are closer to my core business. And so I think the challenge for agencies is, well, where can I differentiate? Where can I add value? And I think a lot of it is, is, to, do with, is to do with other industries. You know, was, we've just been through a long and very robust and, and a very well-run uh, roster review process supported by oyster catchers. And what was really interesting... A lot to pay yeah, I said that, that yeah. Stuff. That's 10% discount, by the way. And, and, and what, was, what was really interesting was that actually most, most agencies, big and, and small, would come in and tell you all about the financial stuff that they did. And I'm thinking, I don't care, really, because, you know, I don't want to be the... You know, we don't want to be the tallest dwarf. Um, we, you know, we, we want to be really good marketers. And so, actually, I think the opportunity is to not obsess about, you know, all oh, that, you know, legal in general. Like, well, we, don't, we did some stuff with the Viva and we did some stuff. With, uh, actually, let's talk about, you know, all the great stuff that you do. Because the, the likelihood is that, 
you know, within Unilever, you've got lots of other FMCG people who have kind of gone round the, the mill with Procter and & Gamble, and, and, and that's the same in other industries. Mm. So I think for, there's a big opportunity for agencies to bust that out a little bit and say, you know what, the value we bring is because we've just done something quite similar with the same customer, um, but it was for a lipstick, or it was yeah. for a car, or it was for something else. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but the insight and the behaviour is the same. A question of that, though, because one of the things that I'm loving as part of the briefs we get these days is much more around product and service innovation. Can you ever imagine a world where you do that yourselves, or is that something else that agencies could and should be supplying? I think we do it. We do do it ourselves. I think the, the question is, what other things can an agency bring to the table which will make you do it better? Mm. Yeah, it's another angle. Because I, I think the it's other thing that's angle. interesting, and you're a good example of this, you're a very digitally literate CMO. Mm. And you've come from that background. So you have um, other issues that you're trying to deal with with your business around, as you say, getting them to understand brand. And then, but your relationship and the challenge that you give to agencies is quite an innovative one because mm. you come from that place where you can challenge very hard in the digital space. There are other CMOs. And also, I think it's digital, but and also it's the first job for a while where I haven't run the PL. So at EE, I, you know, I ran the P&L, which yeah. was the you know, digital sales and service. Mm. At Autotrade, I ran the digital business. So, so I think it's, it's, CMOs also need to be more mm. commercial yeah. um, and understand that actually they're just a service internally. You know, I mm. see myself as an internal agent, agency for legal in general. You know, and if the guy in insurance from retirement and savings and investment management and property and capital, you know, if they don't want to um, uh, drive the same agenda that I want to drive, then I've done something wrong because I've not convinced them of it commercially. Mm. Yeah. Mm. And there are going to be more and more clients like yourself that digitally literate going yeah. forward. And, and in a way, that's the future that, uh, that's creating all of these tensions that we need to create the new models to. Mm. I want to thank you all for being a fantastic panel. And I'm um, thank you, everybody, uh, for coming along today. I hope you found it a stimulating uh, session. I've certainly learned a lot listening today. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.